on air. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first live event of the Edgy Ghost MOOC. We are so excited that you're joining us. We actually have participants from all over the world joining us. So we'll be looking at a map of all these um, very exciting uh, participants. And you can see how diverse we are, but we are still looking to fill up those um, points in the map. So you are welcome to join. It is a free online course and you can earn badges for each of the five weeks until March the 23rd. You can sign up. And this is uh, backed by the Ministry of Education in Spain and in TAF and they have tons of other MOOCs you can join. Well, today we're going to have, uh, we have teachers from all over the world, educators from all over the world who are joining us to give us their expert advice on achieving goals as educators. Learning online, especially with the MOOC, sometimes, you know, uh, it might sound a little overwhelming, 500 teachers from all over the world or more. So they're going to give you their expert advice, how to keep motivated, and also something really important for all teachers, which is wellness and balance, how to balance it all. These educators know how to do it. They've been doing it for a while. So I'm going to quickly just say their names, um, let you know where they're from so you can get to know them. And then they're going to go ahead and tell you a little bit more about them afterwards, okay? So... Um, first, I do want to talk about our moderators in the background. We have Fabiana Casella, that she's from Argentina, so she's going to be helping moderate as well throughout the five weeks. And then we also have Kelly Jake Duncan, who um, is my partner with Savannah, our daughter over here. He's located in Texas, and then I'm in Texas, Shelly Sanchez Terrell. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with a panelist over here. All we're traveling all the way around the world to Greece. And we have Christina C. from Greece. Uh, she's a teacher there. And we also next have from Portugal. We are in Portugal. We have Christina Silva. And then we have Lisa Jabs in California. Then Nikki Robertson in Texas, who used to be in Georgia. So, <laughs> and then we go back to Greece with Theodore Papp. So I am so excited to hear from you all today. And let us know a little bit more about you and what you're doing. And we'll start with Christina C. in Greece. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Shelly. Thanks, everyone, for joining. This is such an incredible moment. And I have to say that because it's, parenting goals have been such a big part of my life for the last few years. I'm uh, teaching uh, in Athens, in Greece. Uh, um, my passion is projects, basically, project-based learning and game-based learning. And I also divide my time by serving uh, local associations like uh, TESOL Greece here in Athens. So I'm really looking forward to more of this going on and I'm really happy to be joining you. And Christina in Portugal. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Christina Silva. I'm from Portugal. I've been a teacher for more than 20 years now. Um, I teach English and I also like to work in projects. I'm very thankful for Shelley for being here and for having me here and to see all these people with whom I've been working for the past years. We've known each other for ages. That's the feeling I have. Um, uh, what else can I say? I'm a mom of two. Um, I like projects, as I said before, and actually right now I'm engaged in a lot of them. The 30 goals also changed my life, uh, but we will come to that a bit later. I'm very happy to be here. Well, I think you're definitely right that it feels like a, a family with each of you. You've been such an important part of the journey. And we'll go with that, we'll go to California with Lisa Dabbs. Hey, everybody, Lisa Dabbs here. And I'm, it's such an honor and privilege to be here with all of you. I am in California, as Shelly has shared, and Shelly has actually stayed with me here in California. And it was so much fun when she came to celebrate a birthday with me a couple of years ago. Uh, I am a former elementary school principal and I was an administrator for 19 years. And I am an educational consultant now and an adjunct professor. And my journey in leaving the building and moving into social media and blogging is all due to Shelly because when I left the building in 2000, 
2010. I met her on Twitter in October of 2010, and we connected then because I answered a question on her blog. So more about that later, as Christina said, but it's my honor and privilege to be here with all of you today. And uh, uh, Lisa, she mentioned that now also she is a pretty much has inspired so many new teachers by supporting them with all her new teacher projects and also with principal leadership. So Lisa, you have helped so many um, keep motivated. Um, but I know we'll hear a lot about more about that later. And then we go to Nikki Robertson in Texas now. Hi, um, so I am Nikki Robertson. I'm a school librarian. I just retired from Alabama after 25 years there, packed up and moved to Texas, and now I'm a librarian again down here. So um, I'm enjoying every minute of it. I was, uh, the last 12 years I was high school librarian, and now I'm back in the elementary school and just loving being with the little ones. But I love what Lisa said about how she connected with you, Shelley, because um, 2010 was that magical year for me as well when I connected with you in the 30 goals. And it absolutely changed my life. And um, we'll get into that later, I'm sure, um, more into that. But I'm, I'm so grateful to you and all the wonderful people that I've been able to meet and make friends with through the 30 goals. Well, you're going to get me to tear up, so. I know, me <laughs> we'll too. Get, we'll get more towards that later. And then Theodora as well, Pap, uh, in Greece. Theodora, what are you up to? <laughs> Hi, people. Hi, um, I am Theodora from Panagiotou, and I am in Thessaloniki in northern Greece. Um, I teach English and German here in Thessaloniki. I also instruct spinning and I am into yoga. Uh, I'm really uh, grateful that I'm here with you because 30 Goals has totally changed my life. Uh, it kept my sanity, first of all, and kept me motivated. And uh, I also met some wonderful educators, took part uh, in other projects as well. Um, and uh, I, right now I am into kinesthetic projects with my students and also uh, try to find wellness and mindfulness together with other teachers and students. And that's going to be really important uh, when, when we talk and address that question on, um, you know, motivating not only ourselves, that's definitely a big part of it. And we're going to get more into student motivation next week, but um, definitely that's, you know, I know wellness and um, uh, the growth mindset and, and there's a lot of different types of ways to keep our students also balanced. So I think that's really important. Um, we'll go ahead and let um, Fabiana Casella also introduce herself uh, because she's from Argentina and uh, she's helping moderate in Argentina. So you can get to know a little about her as well. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, it's really an honor. I hope you can hear me well. And I don't, I don't know much uh, what to say because, I mean, seeing you again, it's as if you were here with me at home. And um, it was life changing. I mean, connecting online and uh, all the motivation and exchange of ideas and projects has been, all that has been wonderful. And it is an honor. It, it, I really mean it from the heart. Well, I'm really well. thankful that you're going to be helping moderate the uh, next five weeks. Um, and so definitely you'll see Fabiana quite a bit. Um, Jake would introduce himself, but he's currently with our one your old daughter <laughs> has him <laughs> running rampant. So <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and start with the first question so we can get insights from our experts. And we're going to start with Christina C. Um, in Greece. Christina, can you let us know a little bit about um, the 30 Goals journey, just like some of those aha moments for you or uh, moments that just really inspired you and kept you motivated to be a goal-minded teacher? Uh, certainly. Uh what has been really transforming for me is that it came, 30 goals came into uh, my understanding and my surroundings at a time where I was just about to make a, a jump from uh, working for a school to being a freelance teacher. And I was really overwhelmed. I felt overwhelmed by everything that was going on around me. 
And having something that I can actually pinpoint that I want to do this thing and I want to do the other thing and set it as a goal and then also reflect upon it, not just say I want to do something, but reflect, write about it, discuss about it with other teachers. That has been an incredible moment for me. I've always believed in how the communities of teachers come together. And with the 30 goals, this is what I experienced, meeting incredible educators, not just from my country, but from all over the world helped me because I could set my mind on something, try it out with my students and have a whole group of teachers support me on this and comment on what I was doing. So it really has transformed the way I looked at things. It helped me reflect even more. It helped me put my reflections into practice as well. And I urge everyone to just make that decision to just decide what they want to do and know that there's always going to be support from everywhere around them in the teaching world. And I think that's really important that you point out about the reflection because each of you, um, I invited because you were so um, incredible, uh, incredible with sharing your journeys, you know, and, and accomplishing, you know, whether it was um, motivating your students, whether it was integrating technology, whether it was, you know, engaging parents, each of you were really honest in your reflections and influenced so many and offered so much support to other teachers and even started your own projects, which I know Theodora is going to mention her. We are the, uh, you know, we are on the air project later. So I, really appreciate that you know um you're all very strong reflections and uh we are sharing their blogs of our expert panels in the facebook group and also on twitter you can follow um the conversation if you have edgy goals mook you've been seeing that on the twitter so um you can share uh with that and from there we'll go to christina um in portugal to share her journey um hi um so my experience with the 30 goals uh, happened quite some years ago. And when I came across the 30 goals and when I came across Shelley, um, I had been teaching for way too long. And actually, I started teaching in the 20th century, not in the 21st <laughs> century. <laughs> so and when this happens, there's a time that routine sort of takes over your work, takes over your life. and habits you tend to get stuck to habits you tend to get stuck to methodologies and the way you taught and uh they had worked fine until then but the audience that you have now is different i mean the kids the students you have now are different from the ones you had when you started teaching and somehow i was at the point that I sensed that I needed something different. I just didn't know where to go, what to do. And that's when suddenly, all of a sudden, I bump literally into Shelley Terrell and the 30 goals. And I said, maybe, maybe, because at first that was a whole new world for me. Everything online was so new that I was a bit both scared and overwhelmed by the whole thing. So. I started slowly going through and uh, and first I was just lurking around, just reading what other people were uh, writing and I was reading their blogs and their comments and suddenly I became more confident and I started joining and participating in webinars and so on. And the 30 goals brought me what was lacking at the time, reflection. Uh, so I, I pick Christina's words, and I think reflection was, and, and sharing, of course, was what actually transformed my way of seeing my teaching. And things started changing for me. Um, I started changing my classes. I sensed that the students started to feel more motivated because I was changing. I was more motivated. I don't want to go a bit uh, too further because uh, we will be coming to these questions later on. But what the, the 30 goals have brought me was this a whole community of people who actually thought the same way I did. 
And besides all this, they didn't mind sharing because part of my life was spent with people who actually tried to hit their work so that they could, uh, in a sort of way, work better than I did, <laughs> which was the culture at the time. Uh, Shelley, please interrupt me if I'm talking too much. I know. Much. And I when think, I get started, I, I never stop. What you say, I, I think what you said is, is actually quite um, the experience of some of the teachers that are um, our educators joining us. Um, you know, we have, uh, I think now, 500 participants from around the world, and it grows wow. every day. And some of them probably believe, um, you know, in the MOOC, the same thing. They're, you know, like you said, that it was it was new, overwhelming. So I think you're you're really touching on a lot of uh, the experiences of teachers joining, and I think also as well for a MOOC in general or any kind of online journey, even Thirty Goals. It wasn't a MOOC, but it was you know a challenge, and there's so many yeah. challenges that are so rewarding. I mean, there's so, there's Evo sessions right now. I I think a lot of teachers sometimes feel that you know. I'm new, you know, and I think that's really great that you're saying that, you know, like sharing that experience. And from that experience of new, it, and there might be among you even teachers. And, and so, Christina, you were saying how you were a veteran teacher for many time, you know, for many years, and then you needed that rejuvenation like that, that burst. Absolutely. And then yep. now we go to Lisa Dabbs, who works with maybe you're a brand new teacher and you think wow i just found online you know um pln's personal learn uh learning networks and and things like that so lisa will you let us know a little lisa actually what i should note about lisa is that lisa was actually um setting goals for new teachers so she kind of took on um like she was with me as a facilitator in a way that she would um you know in in focused on um and then later on on leadership as well so lisa <laughs> hi everybody um yeah and shelly you know it's so interesting i was going back to my blog right now and i was looking at um i joined you for two full runs of the 30 goals challenge <laughs> if you recall and i said shelly i would love to do that but i'd like to do it from the perspective of supporting new teachers and you were like okay well then you know let's go ahead and do that so one of the things, Shelly, that the 30 Goals did for me, though, back in that day was because I was new to blogging and I was new to using um, podcasting is it completely stretched me because I had to begin to blog, you know, almost every other day. And that was not something I was familiar with. And I was podcasting, which I had never done. Because when I was in the building, as uh, somebody said, you know, my teaching began like Christina back in the 20th century too. And we didn't have all the tools that we have accessible to us now. I was very innovative. Um, you'll be surprised as a principal though, because my big thing was increasing the infrastructure in our schools so we could have better um, internet access. Believe it or not, the internet access at our schools back in the, in the um, early 2000s was terrible. So, you know, I was always advocating for that in my schools. However, we didn't have these amazing tech tools that we had now. So, and we used Internet Explorer. Oh my gosh, how horrible. But when I joined Shelly. It wasn't AOL. I, know. <laughs> I never used AOL, no. But I did use Internet Explorer. But anyway, it was so incredibly uh, life-changing for me, Shelly, because you your goals really pulled me out of the building pulled me out of where I had been as a school principal for, uh, you know, 19 years. And it, I don't want to say forced, but it did force me to have to look at things differently and to be more creative. And then in the context of that, as I blogged about the 30 goals, I was blogging about how a new teacher might use them. So that was really um, kind of life changing for me too. But lastly, I want to say is, it really helped me to become more creative. I really felt that when I was in the school building as a principal, I had lost a lot of my creativity. I mean, I remember dancing and twirling and playing in trees as a little girl. And when I was a school principal, it was so structured. It was so focused. It was so, um, so many mandates, right? So many focused areas that we need to keep as a principal, so many uh, rules and structures, you know, to protect our kids, to protect our our teachers and, and to keep moving in terms of curriculum. But the 30 goals allowed me 
to find my creativity. And um, so I'm really, really grateful to you for helping me to do that. And I hope that along the way, I might have tapped into that with some of the teachers that I blogged with. So thank you so much, Shelly, for that. Well, I know that you have, you've helped so many, including me, you're constantly, I think with you and I, we go back and forth, like constantly, like project after project, motivating each other. And um, going on that idea of supporting each other, because I think that's a one really huge thing about being goal-minded, a teacher, we say that, and what really inspires that uh, and keeps us going, I believe, is, is um our networks we find like we call that personalized uh, you know personal learning networks or I call it passionate learning network which is why I keep getting the PLN thing wrong because <laughs> I call it passionate learning network network since I'm surrounded by teachers like you and I think one of the the people to really talk about this that it goes to the heart of it um, that I've seen time again uh, really um, you know, um, get teachers motivated about it. It's Nikki Robertson, who, who is in uh, now in Texas. I kept saying you were in Georgia because I met you at the Georgia conference, but you came from Alabama, and now you're in my neck of the woods, an hour away. So, Nikki, will you sh uh, share with us your experience, my journey? And you know, I tell this journey wherever I go, and I always start crying because you know, even though it happened in 2010, it still so touches me as to how my life has been completely transformed, not just professionally, but personally as well. So like Lisa, I stumbled across the 30 goals challenge um, in 2010. But before that, I had been teaching for a long time. I started teaching in 1992. <laughs> <laughs> and this was 2010 and I was a completely burned out librarian. I was coming to work and doing the bare minimum to get a paycheck and that's all. And then I started seeing in periodicals coming into the library, these strange little squares with uh, white squares with the black on them, QR codes. And I was like, what are those QR codes? What are these? And I started researching because, you know, librarians, we research. So I started researching them. And then I got really angry because when I started to research QR codes on the magazines that were coming in, I started seeing teachers that had been using QR codes for two or three years already in their classrooms, in their libraries to enhance student learning. And I was angry because my school district hadn't taught me about them. Because from 1992 up until 2010, I depended on my school and my district to bring professional learning to me. And I didn't realize that I was empowered to go out, search and find my own professional learning. And so I set on a journey to find out, well, how did these other teachers know about QR codes if I didn't? Are, there, do, are their districts just better at professional development than mine? <laughs> What's the deal? How do these teachers know about these things? And I don't. And what I discovered is that they didn't sit around and wait for learning to come to them. They empowered themselves to be learners and continuous learners, even though they were no longer in college, they had been teaching for a long time. They wanted to continue that learning path. And I started looking for professional developments online, but you know, you get those cheesy professional developments that don't really teach you anything and cost you so much money. And I was like, no, I need free. I'm a teacher. <laughs> I need free. And I just by chance stumbled across the 30 goals challenge and I saw the 30 goals and I was thinking, well, darn, I missed it. You probably had to start this at the beginning of the year and it wasn't the beginning of the year. And then I realized that, and this is what I tell people is you can start it anytime you want. You can choose one goal, two goals, do all 30 goals. You can start with goal 15 if you'd rather start with goal 15. There is nothing saying you had to start with goal one and work your way through to goal 30. And if you don't like that year's goals, go back to some other years, <laughs> you know, and find something. But what I found that it does for teachers who are wanting to do something different, um, fear holds you back because you don't know where to start. And what the 30 goals did for me is it gave me a starting place 
and I could choose where I felt I, I felt comfortable starting. And then from there I could move on. Um, but I did hit a point because one of the first goals I, I started with was joining in the Twitter chats with Ed chat, which you, Jerry and Tom Whitby had all started around that same time too. Well, what I tell people about becoming a connected educator is it's not all sunshine, rainbows and lollipops. What happens at first is it's a horribly emotional trip when you start connecting on Twitter and Twitter chats and becoming a connected educator because you're surrounded by these incredible superstar educators that are doing amazing things and you're like, Oh my God, I've been a terrible <laughs> educator my whole life. What have I been doing? And you start to completely doubt and question yourself. And, and, um, I, I was trying to hang on. I was looking that I only had eight years to retirement and I got to this crossroads where I thought, am I going to do something different? That's going to be tough and hard, but it's going to be worth it in the long run, which I didn't know then. Or am I just going to skate for the next eight years and collect a paycheck until I can get out? And one night in particular, I was feeling particularly overwhelmed after an ed chat and full of self doubt and full of, I can't do this. And I emailed several people that I connected with, you know, superstars um, that I connected with through the ed chat and just said, you know, thank you for the journey. Thank you for sharing all that you've done with me. But I'm not this person or that person. And I can't, I'm not a superstar. I'm nobody. And I just can't do this. So um, continue the journey with others. But I'm going to go down this path and retire in eight years. But thank you. Because I can't. I, I don't have it in me to be a superstar or a rock star or to even be better than what I am right now today. And that was about 10 o'clock at night. And I had to get up at five o'clock the next morning to get ready for work. And I really didn't expect anyone to contact me because who was I? Nobody. And they were superstars. But when I woke up at five, I said, you know what? <sighs> Look at your email. Nobody's going to ever respond, but look at your email. And I did. And every single person that I connected with emailed me back. They had emailed me back by five o'clock that morning. And they all had the same message for me, which was basically, hang in there, girl. Don't leave. You can do this. Just be a better person today. And then tomorrow, try again. And then the next day, try again. And we will all have your back. And one thing I know for sure about the 30 goals in the community that I've been able to connect with online, my PLN, is that every single step of the way, they have had my back. Nothing I've been able to accomplish since 2010 is because of me, but it's because of the community that's been pushing me forward and supporting me throughout my journey. And I'm at a place now where I never thought I would be. And I am so happy that I did not take that other path. And it's all because I connected with Shell and th the 30 goals. Well, that's just so amazing. And I, I think I, I think one of the great things you talk about, which is, you know, part of any journey people go on, whether it's, you know, taking um, an online course like this and move that it's um, that it's all the people that you meet it's all the people who take time and all each of you is overwhelmingly busy I know this because I talk with you all the time you join all these crazy things I ask you to join you make room for it even though I know each of you has a million things you're doing but one of the great things and I think is it's wonderful about each of you is that not only did you um you know some of you had support but you pass it forward like you each of you is responsible for inspiring like so many teachers out there with your projects and things like that. And talking about that, Theodora is a great example. 
Um, I even, you know, put her and I mentioned all of you in the book, but, you know, part of, um, you know, one of the, the chapters really highlighted one of Theodora's projects because, um, you know, she took something that, you know, was just like a goal and decided that she was going to be someone who mentors and, and supports others and gets their classes and other students excited. And it was the same kind of idea. Like, I think that, you know, sometimes when we go online, we see, you know, some people even tell me, you know, it looks a little overwhelming. They're like, wow, you have so many followers, you're a rock star or something. And that. I don't like that term, but I know that's like a popular term that's listed, out, you know, that's out there and that's, but I think that that they see all of you and they think the same thing. And some of you, you know, I think that was great. Like Theodora um, just said, you know, I'm just going to start things. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And she did. And I just think that that's amazing. So Theodora, will you share with us, you know, um, where you gain this confidence, you, you know, accomplishing goals and the things that you experienced? Well, uh, I don't consider myself a confident person, <laughs> <laughs> actually. Uh, when I started the 30 goals, well, I, I had met uh, Shelly in Athens. Uh, she had presented her project back in the beginning, but I didn't actually, I hadn't actually started until much later, a, a summer when I was really depressed, I didn't know what to do with my life. I didn't have work because in the summer, if you're freelance, you don't have anything to do. So uh, I said, okay, let's uh, read Sally's uh, blog and see what she's doing. <laughs> and yeah, I didn't have anything else to do. So I gave it a try. I, ha I already had a blog, but nobody read it because if you don't have the right P uh, PLN, to, you know, to share things. Uh, you can't actually find on your own readers or people to read. You have to have connections. So I wrote uh, one post and then I wrote another and I actually saw that uh, people were uh, reading what I had to say. And I also saw that uh, teachers uh, also um, shared uh, my worries, my concerns, my joys. We all got happy with the same things and we all got sad with the same things. And uh, that year, when the uh, On the Air project started, I wanted to do something with myself uh, because uh, I had already presented uh, in conventions in Greece, but not on my own. I wanted to do something on my own. So I took this goal, um, I dared myself, and I said, okay, I want to find people to help me um, do something. Uh, I posted on our, I posted this on uh, our Facebook page, and I was lucky enough to find uh, Cristina from Portugal and Fabiana from Argentina and Georgia from Thessaloniki as well, who is my friend, and uh, also Hannah from the Czech Republic, and we all started something together with our classes, with our students. Um, we cooperated, uh, our students um, had difficulties, uh, of course, but we all talked to each other and we tried to find solutions. Um, and in the end, uh, it came out a really nice project and I'm really, really grateful that you have us selling your book because um, I know that people can do things if they want to. Um, and that's the main thing. Uh, so I, I think that, um, I have found a lot of support, uh, first of all, and whatever project I want to start now, I know that I can ask you, I can ask everybody from the group, and you all uh, are there for me, uh, for my project, and I'm there for you, of, of course. Um, and that uh, keeps me motivated, that keeps my enthusiasm going. As, and I think, you know, one of the great things about the We Are On The Air project, um, and I know Christina was part of it too, so I just thought that um, it, it, it involved like, and that's the other thing about this as well, and I, I think Nikki touched on this as well, which was sometimes we see these teachers doing great things with technology, um, like for example, we saw um, with the We Are On The Air project, Theodora, you had them, students actually do video and introduce their cultures. And I, I, when we use technology, 
I think it's great to have projects and, and aim for it. Like, what can we do together? You know, it's not only about learning the tools and things like that, but um, online learning like this really inspires you. It gives you a purpose, a meaningful purpose. And you get to meet all of these incredible teachers and, and the students get to meet each other from other countries. And I just thought that part of it was really amazing. Um, I know each of you kind of touched on the next question, but I, I want to go ahead and if you want to share any other tips on um, how do you keep motivated as a teacher yourself? Now, some of you talked about that, but what would you, um, you know, uh, to keep really focusing on accomplishing different goals within your classroom, you know, to, to and more getting on like um, tackling different areas because that's one thing as a teacher, it's never just, you know, you're presented with one obstacle at a time. It's a whole bunch of things we're expected to do. We're expected to engage parents. We're expected to have great classroom management. Like, you know, <laughs> we're expected to integrate technology. We're expected to do our own professional development now. So we'll start with the Adora and if you can offer tips on how you just keep up with all of that. Well, I make lists. I'm a list person. So I write everything uh, from the beginning of the year. I write everything down, what I want to do. And uh, even with my students, or if I have a class with my classes, and uh, uh, we set goals and we tick them when they are over. And we set more goals in the uh, continuing the year. But uh, if you have a list and you, you see what you want to do, uh, then it's easier, I guess. Uh, even if we have difficulties, we have to do this because it's on the list. Okay, that's a great tip. Uh, Nikki, what would be, and we'll go, uh, then Nikki, then Lisa, and then Christina uh, S, and then Christina C. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm glad you asked this question, Shelley, because the question I get asked a lot is, how do you keep up with all all the new stuff that's happening because especially with technology, there's so much new stuff happening. So of course, having a PLN is really important because if they go to a conference you don't go to and they're sharing that stuff out via social media, you can pick that up. But I also um, troll <laughs> um, conference hashtags, especially <laughs> tech conference hashtags, and I'm looking constantly for those. And I'll also go out for ed camps and I look for their SmackDown uh, documents because a lot of ed camps, when they do their SmackDown, they, they have like a Google Doc with everything that was shared during the SmackDown. So I actively troll. I also have, um, I use, it's a Flipboard. I don't know if you've heard of Flipboard before. Um, it's an app and it can aggregate all of your tweets and other social media into like a magazine style. And so then I can just sit there and quickly each night, I just kind of flip through the headlines and then save things that look interesting to me or something that I might um, want to look at further to use with my kids in, in the classroom. So just, you know, staying in touch with your friends, knowing what hashtags to follow and then having something to aggregate all the, the different information that's out there into one place um, to easily get to it. And then don't be afraid to try new things. And well, I think those are great uh, resources you shared because I notice now that I am a social, um, you know, media director for s some different places, TESOL, I have to share um, knowledge, uh, you know, resources all the time. And that would take forever if I just went through my PLN. So I've been looking through like Flipboards, paper leaves, uh, you know, all of those really do help so much with, you know, just showing you the great stuff in your Twitter stream. Like those, I, saw, I think that's a really good tip. Lisa? Well, I have to piggyback on what um, everyone has said so far, but the way that I'm staying motivated is I'm actually stepping outside the, um, our education circles. So I am reading books written by social media um, marketers, if you will, who actually call themselves educators. People wow. like Gary Vaynerchuk, um, a woman that I adore, Amy Porterfield, Marie Forleo. And what I'm finding is, Shelley, we can learn so much 
from these people that we don't learn when we're in college or in the university. And so when I approach my work as uh, an adjunct professor, because you and I have talked about this before, yeah. and how teaching adults is so different from teaching um, children and teaching adults face to face. When you're when you're teaching online, it might be a different experience. But when you have to step into that classroom and you have all these um, pre-service teachers looking at you, because I teach for um, in the child development division um, at the university that I teach for, it's a different experience. They're coming exhausted. They're coming tired. They really don't want to be there. You know, they pop up their laptops and they want to sit at the back of the classroom and you know pretend like they're looking at me but they're really checking out their Facebook stream so <laughs> I, I find that I get my motivation from reading outside of our uh, education landscape which motivates me to try new things with my class the other thing that I did and I and I agree with what um, uh, Nikki said is I stretched myself by taking courses produced by non-educators to help me to see how I might be able to do my own teaching in a different style or a more creative style. And so I really stretched this year, um, ladies, and I, last year rather, and I jumped into Marie Forleo's B-School. Now, if you don't know about B-School, I urge you to Google it because it's opening okay. up again this March. Um, it is a bit of a, of a financial um, commitment, but she lets you pay a monthly. <laughs> and ladies, the info I received was amazing and invaluable. And I'm able to take that 10-week uh, course and apply it to the work that I do. So to recap, I think we need to read out of our industry and see what other people are doing. And I think we need to take courses out of our industry that challenge us so that when we work with our students, whether they're children or in you know, my case, adults, we can bring some of that current knowledge to to them and then help them to learn how they could adapt that because sometimes my students will say well how would I do that or they'll say well how can I do blogging and I'm thinking oh palm to forehead okay, <laughs> we, need to, we need to dial this back and I need to Lisa you're taking it too far so um, those would just be some of the things that help me to stay motivated but um, I'm really challenging some of my um, administrators uh, and a thriving admin in a group that I'm in in Boxer to do that as well, to look outside of the education landscape and see how the folks that are doing things in other industries can impact how we do our work and make it better. Well, I think that's a great tip. Uh, Jake, um, who's, you know, with the baby right now, but he has, you saw the books in the background and he reads um, so much from other people. Um, you know, he has so many books on all these different uh, people with social media, also with um, the culture. I mean, in, he's always, uh, you know, introducing me to new ideas that are outside of the realm of education, but still very much like give a highlight of um, the impact of social media and the way people use it to learn, to live, that I apply with my you know, freshmen in college since I teach college English. And I, I think it's a good, um, you know, my inspirations, we listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, those really help us. I know a lot of teachers um, also get inspired by TED Talks. So I think that's a really good tip. From there, we'll go to Christina in Portugal. How do you keep motivated and um, continue setting goals in your career? <laughs> You know, Shelly, I get bored very easily. So I have to be motivated all the time. I have to search for new things. I'm always searching for new things. I need that. It, this could be a bit selfish because I'm not just only thinking about my students. I'm thinking about myself. I have to keep myself going. And so I do all sorts of things. And to do that, I have to also, like um, Lisa just said, I have to piggyback on some of the things you, you just mentioned, like reading blogs, like uh, following uh, Facebook groups, uh, whatever things. And um, what I do is, uh, what I said before, reflect, I stop. I also make lists like Dora, and I say, <laughs> okay, this is what I want, so this is uh, what I'm going to do. And I'm really focused on technology 
uh, I think that with this new generation that we're having, these digital natives, we need to use technology in class to motivate them. So uh, that's a sort of a path I, I usually take. So I, I grab all the new stuff I get in, in my um, pearl trees uh, that I got to know through you, Shelley. <laughs> so I get all my uh, apps here, all the things that I consider important. I uh, keep them here. It's a curating uh, tool. And and then training. So I look for all sorts of MOOCs, uh, online MOOCs, obviously, if they're online, if they're a MOOC. Um, so I, I follow a lot of MOOCs. And also, whenever I have the chance, I, um, I attend courses and conferences, not only online, but I think that's the main thing. And then in class, I always try to do as different as possible. And to do that, you have to observe your audience. You have to observe the people you're working with. You mentioned adults, you mentioned teenagers, you mentioned uh, young learners. So you go into the classroom, you look around and you see what you can do. And that's what I do basically. I think that's important what you said. So it's not, and that touches on the, you know, and the next question we're gonna have for a follow up, but um, that you talk about online learning curation and bookmarking all that. And that's such an important part of, you know, all of us of kn knowing this knowledge and learning from each other. Is not only do you, is it great to have a blog where you can reflect on how you use that and gather it, but it, those curation tools you were talking about, pearl trees. I know some people love Pinterest. We're using Pinterest. We actually have uh, Pinterest for um, this course that we're pinning all the reflections and everything. Um, I know some people like to use Live Finders. That's really great for education. Edu Clipper, really great for Edu Clip. Um, for you know, Flipboard's another curation tool. So having, I think that's very important. You know, to be able to have where you can bookmark everything you learned. And um, I want to say that I looked at your blog and you have so much information about all the great MOOCs that you've joined. And I, I think <laughs> something that people do with the MOOCs too is now they're starting to keep sketch notes to be able to, um, you know, about the learning, their experience as well. So that's something I want to try. I haven't tried yet, but um, I think that's really fascinating on how people continue to be inspired by curating, curating in very creative artistic ways like that, like even sketch noting. So Christine and Grace, so what would be your tips for, um, you know, for staying motivated, trying new things and keeping up with this, uh, the different technologies? I, I will have to agree with everything that's been said so far. Uh, <laughs> on the whole, it is certainly, you know, overwhelming when everything just comes at you at high speed. Uh, for me, it's definitely because I've kind of, you know, my mind sometimes I feel like it's a chaos. So I do follow the chaos theory a little bit. Uh, I mean, I try, I've tried making lists, but I'm terrible at keeping the list going. So it's, that's not working for me. Uh, so what I want, what I want to say mainly is that it really boils down to how, how you find motivation. I find motivation through what my students uh, can achieve and want. And that includes the whole environment. So I always try to have meetings because doing it online or in you know face to face is a choice. But I always try to have a meeting with all my students together, whether that's on a hangout or face to face at, at a, wherever we can. And that includes the parents as well. I try to have a meeting with the parents of all my students because I want to know what their goals are. Sometimes, the, you know, there's a conflict between what they want and what the students want and what I want to achieve. So it's a good idea to just have them all together at some point and try to figure out what is going on. What are we doing here? Why are we doing this? That's why I think, you know, being a project-based sort of advocate in, in my in my sense this is why i'm doing it and this is how it works because we all come together as a teacher i certainly well, I, my, think, I think my talk yeah sorry and no 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 <laughs> sorry continue <laughs> no, no. i was gonna say I've, that that's so great that you brought up this whole entire communication thing because that is so important you know to be able to um you know uh, going back to the communication and and having that 
I, and I think that that's important because when you do online learning, um, sometimes we feel like you know it's uh, that you you can still have that kind of face to face and still feel like you know you can meet everyone. Like you said, like even if it's a hangout or, and I really like because um, in week three or four, I think is when we're talking about parent engagement and uh, the fact that you mentioned like you look at the parents' goals too, um, I think is so important. I think that's really fascinating. But continue, what were you saying, Christina? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, that, that's, that's because that is the basis and thank you for, you know, stepping in there because that is really important because it's not just, you know, you are teaching the students, but it's not just the students. There is a whole background and a whole environment that comes into it. And that includes us as teachers. For me personally, it's definitely blogging. Blogging is the, the best thing that has ever happened to me. And not just blogging myself, writing, but reading other people's blogs, because that's what we need. We need, you know, the expert advice. And the expert advice most of the times comes from the people who actually do the teaching. And that's why I've been so, you know, happy to be part of this, of the 30 goals and of, you know, this we're doing today, because you can get to hear what people actually do. And you can, relate to it you say that yes this is true this is what i do and this is what i well, maybe i don't do that but i can understand it this is the whole uh point i think and this is what community brings out yes we need to step out of just you know our closed educational sort of little bubble and circle that we have we need to step out of it because it's not you know anything can be educational every single thing we do you know each day we can learn something from it and that's why we need to step out. We need to step out of what we think is our environment and say, oh, maybe we need to read this as well and read it and look into it. We need to read other people's practice, what they do. Like I've been reading your blog, I've been reading tons of blogs. I mean, the only thing, let's say, if I ever made a kind of a list of myself and actually kept to it is reading blogs every day. I read at least five or six blog posts every day and I learn something from each of them and I'm very happy about it. Well, I think those are great tips. I'm going to move on to the last question. We'll start with you again, Christina. And yeah. I'm, and then Jake's going to go ahead and wrap things up because I actually have another webinar uh, talking about that, uh, overbooking myself. But the last question I think is really important, which is, so all of us are very motivated. Now we've talked about how, you know, we keep up with the technology, how we keep up with online learning. And I think the really important part, too, is... Uh, how do you balance? So when we, you end up through that journey where you end up, you know, you have to think about the balance because I know like me, I get overzealous and that I do so many things. As a mom, I've looked more like, okay, yeah, before it was okay that I didn't eat. I, you know, <laughs> did way too much caffeine. <laughs> I didn't sleep. But now as a mom, I know that is so important. So I want you to all kind of, um, you know, uh, provide some tips or, you know, what it is to keep healthy mentally, physically and everything like that. And then once again, I want to say thank you to all of you. Um, and I appreciate and love you all so, so much. And I'll let uh, Jake go ahead and wrap up and tell you all about the week. Keep on going. Keep on the conversation. Um, but. Um, Christina, we'll start with you, and then we'll go um, down the sure. line. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I, had, I was trying to say that never, ever go on without eating. That is not a good option, whatever you do. And cut down on the coffee, okay? <laughs> That's an expert sort of tip. Uh, no, I think that primarily we need to, um, what I've learned anyway throughout the years, is that we need to learn to say no sometimes because uh we we forget that i think we we are most of us overzealous we want to take part in things we are enthusiastic about being part of of, of such a community as we are in the 30 goals but at some time the, you know we need to stop there there is always a stop you need to stop that and how do you know that i think for me i know it when when it feels like i need to you shouldn't let it get to the point where you can actually physically feel it. If at some point you feel overwhelmed by something, if you have a, a second thought or a doubt, you should consider maybe saying no sometimes. And I think that for me has been a top advice given to me by one of my trainers. And yes, we do, we can't do everything. We want to be part of things and we can find alternatives. We can do things 
you know, we don't have to always participate in everything, but we can participate in ways that work for us. It can be one time you can write a blog or you can participate in, in a talk or you can give a presentation, but you do not have to do every single thing all the time. And we need to look after ourselves. Yes, eating well is important. Taking exercise is important. Doing things that we love with the people we love around us are important. Not, not only the teachers, our colleagues, but also our families, the people that are with us, our friends, everyone that is in our life is important equally. And that actually helps us move forward. So I would like to thank you as well for making me you know, part of this and for sharing today. Thank you, Christina. Um, Christina, would, uh, would you like to, to go next? Yeah, uh, actually, I, I think it's very important what Christina C. just said about saying no. Um, we tend to say yes a lot of time, but I'm trying to escape the sun, let me put it like this. Um, and one of the things that I found important to stop doing is, as, as you are, as a teacher, you always tend to work throughout the weekend. I don't know if that happens to you, but I'm sure it does. And probably many of you listening are relating to what I'm saying. We do work a lot through weekends. And there, I, it, I came to a point that I, I was nearly going to the threshold between, uh, let's say, body well-being and burnout. So I said, okay, I have to diminish. And I started cutting on my weekend uh, amount of work uh, and the things I brought home from school. And I think that's important. So every now and then, you just take a weekend for yourself and do something with your family and go, like Christina said, do some exercise, take a hot <laughs> bath with bubbles and relax. Because this is, I would say that this is the best, most wonderful, most rewarding, and most exhausting profession job in the world. And to keep it going, we need to take care of ourselves, eat well, sleep well, and spa, why not? Thank you. Absolutely, thank you so much uh, again. And uh, so Theodore? Um. Well, actually, um, I have a presentation about uh, burnout um, in the coming weeks. Uh, so uh, eating healthily is something very important. Exercise is something very important and not just exercise once a week. We should move every day to keep our body motivated as well. And uh, spending time with people uh, uh, outside work because we teachers uh, tend to, to spend time only with other teachers. Yeah. Uh, we need to find um, people who do other things to, to see how the reality of the world is. Um, and also spend time with ourselves, meditation or not meditation, uh, just, just sit and uh, in a quiet place and uh, just feel your breath and just relax. Uh, even for five minutes a day, this makes a difference. Thank you. Yes, thanks again. Alisa? Hey, Jake, good to see you. So good to see you, too. Yeah. Okay, my friend. Um, I, I echo everything everyone has said, and I'm going to add, we need to unplug. The fear of missing out is real, not just for the millennials, and my two sons are millennials. It's us, it's, you know, baby boomers, it's um, generation Xers and Yers, you know, staying connected to this thing constantly. They've done the research, it's terrible. We need to unplug and not just, you know, an hour before we go to bed, which is now research-based, we must do it. We need to unplug throughout the day. I remember a long time ago, um, when uh, I was on a webinar with Tom Whitby and they were asking him, well, how do you do this? And how do you do that on Twitter? And he said, look guys, 15 minutes a day, that's it, 15 minutes a day. And I could tell that people felt, oh, you know, we feel so much more at ease because people are thinking, oh, I have to stay on here for an hour and catch everything. It's one thing if you make a commitment to chat, 
And we've all done it. I led a chat for seven years for new teachers, new teacher chat. It was amazing. And Shelly helped me to, to build that chat. But we, we have to unplug, friends. We have to, um, as Theodora said, we have to get out into the sunlight. We have to step on the grass. We need to feel the sand. If you're around an area where there's any kind of ocean or lake land, step in the sand. It's research-based. If we don't do those things, we are going to cause such harm to ourselves. And then we are um, mimicking that and taking that into our classrooms. And we wonder why our kids would rather be on here than listening to us teach. Trust me, I, I go through this frequently with my uh, pre-service teachers. So unplugging, um, stepping outside, getting sunshine, stepping on grass, and then really releasing ourselves from FOMO. Whatever is out there is going to be able to be captured one way or another, like some of you have so marvelously shared with curation tools. But stepping away and unplugging would be the number one way that I really seek balance. And oftentimes I'll get emails and tweets and DMs on Saturday and Sunday. I don't respond. And I've had to tell people Saturday and Sunday, that's my time. And especially Sunday, that's family day. And I'm an empty nester now because my youngest moved out. So it's just me and my husband. But that's my family time and me time. So take time, unplug, get outside and be sure to spend time with family. If not, you are truly, the research says, medical research, that we are cutting our lives short and none of us want to do that. So it's so important. Absolutely. This is such great advice. I mean, I really appreciate all of you. Um, uh, it's just fantastic to hear and uh, you're so right. Um, Nikki? Um, of course, I echo what everyone else said. I, I finally said, you know, I had to learn how to say no. Of course, I never say no to Shelly. So <laughs> she's the one person it doesn't matter what's happening. I'll say yes to. But also um, use tools that are going to help you. Um, one that I use all the time is Buffer because I can schedule tweets and Instagram posts and Facebook posts to go out on a certain day at a certain time. And so I'll sit down and I will compose all of those for the entire week, things that are going to go home to my parents, things that I want out to students, things that I want out to my PLN. And I go ahead and use Buffer to um, set all those up to go out at certain days and certain times. So it might look like, gosh, you're always on social media. Not really. <laughs> I sat down at one time and wrote everyone that was going to be done and added the pictures and, and go. And then um, what I do with my kids is I use them too. Um, so instead of me having to be on social media tweeting out all day long or, or um, doing Snapchat all day long of what we're doing, because one thing I like to use social media for is to celebrate all the awesome things that are happening in our library and our school but also teaching digital citizenship within the environment of Snapchat or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram is I give my library helpers, we, I have centers and so my library helper kids, whoever's in that center at that time, I give them my phone, it's open to the school Snapchat and I say, go around, take pictures and write snaps about the awesome things that we're learning and doing in the library. Show it to me before you post it, and then I let them post it. And that way, they're learning in that in, in the real environment, not in a, a simulation or you know a video and a game that's talking about social media, but in the real environment, how do you use social media properly? And so again, it's not me doing all the work. I'm putting that off onto the kids and also teaching at the same time. So how can we um, do this um, in more effective ways and us always being connected and doing it ourselves. Absolutely. I think that authenticity is like, is a really key thing is important because they really see the value in it whether, rather than when it's just something that's in a, a closed space that having things be public and really affect other people is just a, a great thing. Um, did I miss anybody? Uh, <laughs> I'm on a mobile and uh, we went to the park so that Savvy wouldn't, Savvy was uh, actually sleepy. So she was just rowdy and making a lot of noise. And as soon as we got to the park and went in the swing for about five minutes, she was out cold and she was asleep. <laughs> so, so she's sitting beside me here asleep. Um, Shelly, of course, is texting me, reminding me things that I need to, to pass on to everybody. But more than anything, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much to all of you for being here. 
Um, it was emotional for me just to listen. I mean, it always is listening to you speak, but it's just uh, so powerful to hear you share your messages. And it's such an inspiration to, I mean, I know to me, but to so many teachers. And uh, it's just so valuable um, for me to get to hear it and uh, about your journeys and about, you know, the amazing things that you do, but just how, you know, how difficult it can be to get started sometimes. So, um, or just for anybody, really, it's, it's a difficult thing. And it's a uh, intimidating like many of you said so um it's it's an honor to be in your presence you know i'm i'm just me but um it's it's great to to get to be here with you and get to participate and learn with you so uh thank you all from all over the world for you know taking time out of your day early in the morning late in the afternoon everywhere um i do want to say uh, uh, just thank you again to everybody um the the mooc is still open we're still welcome to you know please please join uh, you know, i didn't get to take a look to see if fabiana had any questions from facebook um but we'll if anybody has has those open if you see any questions that you know please pass those on we'll uh, make sure we get those answered um there and if you know if we could here um but in so please join if you haven't if you're watching if you're just seeing this for the first time saying what is this really about then please uh you know take the, the couple minutes to join the mooc it's uh six weeks we're really excited it's it's uh a lot of wonderful people. These rock stars here joined us. Um, in the next week, we've got Dr. Will Dayimport. I am Dr. Will on Twitter and uh, Noah Geisel, Senor G. We'll be talking about uh, student motivation and um, we'll be talking about badging, micro-credentialing. Uh, Noah Geisel's uh, district has done amazing things with that and he's continuing to do great things outside of his district. Um, we will not have a live uh, hangout next week. We'll be just participating through a, tw a Twitter chat. Uh, the hashtag will be uh, EduGoalsMOOC, and um, you can follow that along now, too. A lot of people are tweeting. I've been trying to share some of that and keep up. But, again, it's just the messages have been so powerful and everything you've had so I'd had to say that I can't really keep up. I've just been kind of – I was tearing up um, several times. So um, next week, the, the third week after that, we've got uh, Larry Ferlazzo from California, Sacramento, I believe. And, um, oh, geez, and Steve Wheeler from the U.K., from will be um, talking with us about a lot about parent um, parent involvement, parent engagement, things like that, and they're both just wonderful at that. So um, I, I cover everything that's coming up. There's so much coming up, and um, there's always again, we'll, we'll always be there'll be recordings of this uh, so come back and watch. We'll follow along on the hashtag. It, it's uh, it's a lot to keep up with. There are so many people, but we're, we're welcoming to so many more. So. Um, I'm sure that I missed things that I should have said, but uh, I can't thank you so much. I can't thank you enough for, for joining us. And it's just really, truly an honor to get to, to be here with you and uh, to learn from you and to continue to, you know, to make those connections with uh, the new folks to Twitter. And thank you so much again for all that you do and for sharing. And uh, I think that we can wrap it up. So uh, thanks again. And I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, <laughs> and we'll see you in the MOOC. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.